Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to paint this watercolor rose painting and um, we're gonna sketch it together too. The real-time version of this is up in Critique Club right now, so if you're a member, you can log in and check that out. And if you wanna be a member, I'll have a link down below and I'll tell you how you can sign up. I'm gonna be using the brand new Turner watercolor signature set that I have through Jerry's Artorama that's brand new. And I am gonna be sketching right directly on the nine by 12 Artistico watercolor block that comes in that set. And I'm just using a mechanical pencil. Um, I'm using that because it's a little bit darker for you to see on camera. Otherwise I'd probably use a, um, like a red or a pink color race pencil so I could see it, but because I wanna make sure you can see it, I'm using that pencil. So use whatever you have, but I would keep my lines light just so you don't have to um, see them later. Although I will say that with all the layering that we're doing, you actually don't really see any pencil lines when you're all done. Um, so it wasn't it wasn't too bad, uh, but I did wanna draw dark enough. And this is one of the uh, Bic me mechanical pencils, and I think it's a 0.9 millimeter lead, so it's a pretty like thick, dark soft lead so it's actually kind of nice for sketching and if you like that darker thick lead um it's not so great if you write really neat and tiny because the size of the lead's a little big i just basically found like my most distinct pretty petal from my reference photo and i'll link that down below um and then i kind of worked around from there i did do that kind of like and it's really hard to see this but i did a oval just to kind of map out where i wanted my flower petals to kind of fit within i always do that when i'm drawing flowers because i think it helps me uh not get um, too big or too small or kind of work off the page. It gives me kind of like a boundary of where I'm going to keep everything in. So uh, I, I love drawing multi-petal flowers like this. These are kind of like the roses that you would find on a rose bush as opposed to like long stem roses you'd find in a flower shop. So um, you've kind of got a lot of like really fluffy, loose petals there. Uh, more petals than like beach roses, but kind of like if you had a rose bush. I hope that makes sense. Kind of like the rose bushes around here anyway. Now the colors I'm using, I'm keeping a really limited palette and I'm working wet from the tube because I don't usually do that and I thought it would be kind of fun uh, to kind of break me out of my crafty artsy blahs I've been in lately. And I'm using uh, Maya Blue, which is this pretty kind of, it's almost like, a, like an indigo or a Prussian blue. And I'm also using Rose Red. Um, mixing those two t colors together to get some violet for the background. It's such a pretty color. The Mayan blue has a, a little bit of a soft um, granulating quality or tempering quality. It gives a nice atmosphere to the other colors. I wasn't crazy about other Mayan blues I've tried from the Turner line, but I really like the Mayan blue for mixing just because it has that nice atmospheric quality and you can thin it way down and still control it. It doesn't get too runny. And then I'm also using Gamboge, which is a beautiful, transparent, warm yellow. And I'm using olive green, which is almost like a, like a in-between color between like a sap green and a um, like uh, um, green gold. It actually reminds me a lot of the Windsor & Newton sap green, which is a little bit more of a, of a golden uh, green color. It's a little bit softer than the, uh, the regular sap green that's in the Turner line, which is also in my signature set. So uh, it's just a nice additional... A convenient screen to have but working with these uh these four colors we're able to get everything we need in this in this uh, painting and i was thinking i actually would maybe bring in an earth tone but i didn't have to it was really easy to mix what i needed to with the colors i had now this background is done wet into wet so i am not really um concerned with keeping anything uh you know, divide it up. I find that if I wet the paper really well, like I sprayed it pretty well, then I spread out the paint so it was really wet. If I wet it really well, then I go over with my normally wet brush and pigment. It kind of stays where you put it. So it's kind of like when you wet the back of the paper. And if you live in a dry climate, you may want to consider tearing a, a piece of paper off or using a loose sheet of paper, wetting the back, sticking it down onto a piece of plexiglass and then wetting the front. And that will give you more open time because even in Maine, um, I was having a hard time like that, that upper corner, even with those wet as I got it was starting to dry out on me. Now by flicking some watery paint over this, I get that feeling, I get that look of almost like baby's breath, which I thought was a really nice texture and um, kind of a nice way to do that if you find that you'd like to have something like a baby's breath in a bouquet where you're doing a wet background. You can also use salt um, and you'll get a different type of texture, almost like a snowflakey texture, but it's definitely uh, something you can do. Now, after everything dried, I started to work and I, I decided I was going to work in the upper, um, the upper, 
left hand corner first, left sun right, man, um, because I didn't want to drag my hand in it. I am working on this kind of incline board on my um, on my smaller workspace there. And the reason I'm on an incline board is basically because it actually does help with um, per not getting a perspective um, uh, kind of parallax when you're working, but it also eliminates glare when I'm filming. And I'm just using the, um, I'm just kind of trying to kind of paint and shade as I go while I'm putting the second layer on. And I haven't decided how much, how detailed I want to get with this painting. So I figured I'll start with that a level of detail. I'll bring everything up to at least that level. And then if I want to do more, I can. Now for the petals, this is a bit tedious. And um, in the Critique Club lesson, I do a few kind of step-by-step -step in real time. And then, uh, and then since it's very repetitive, petal to petal, and it takes... Oh man, it took probably 45 minutes to do all the petals. Um, I did just do a few of those in real time. And then I just said, come over and watch the uh, the time lapse if you want to see all the petals getting done because it is, it is very tedious and repetitive. So I basically wet a petal and then um, I would just drip in the colors that I've used already in the background. I didn't drip in um, any green though. I would do the, uh, the, per the mixed purple. I would do the pink on its own, I would do the yellow on its own, and I would do the blue on its own. And the blue actually is more uh, catching the natural light because a lot of times if you're photographing like flowers, especially outside, you'll get this almost like a uh, blue cast to them, depending on what time of day it is and depending on where the light's coming from. But you'll like, if it's natural outside light, it actually has a little bit of a blue to it. And that's what you're, what I'm putting on the petals. And, um, and you just keep doing that all the way around. Now in the center here, uh, it was really bright in the center because all the petals are kind of opening up around the middle. So you get a little bit more yellow in the middle. It's a little bit lighter and brighter and you want to make sure you get that petal painted with something in it because when you go in to add like the uh, the stamen in there, you want to, you don't want to have to mess around with it afterwards. You want to get that color in first and then you'll be able to do that. Uh, and that's where I was thinking I might bring in a neutral tone when I came to do the stamen, but we didn't even need to. It was very easy to mix a nice, uh, a nice brown that worked from the colors that we had. The palette I'm using is a ceramic palette. I think, um, Oh man, I picked that up a long time ago. You could use a dish if you're using liquid colors. You could also use just a plastic watercolor palette. It's all, all depends on what you feel like working from. Um, I thought this would be easy not to have the, you know, have all the colors out and get confused. And plus sometimes it's fun just to, you know, use a ceramic palette because it just, it's so nice to mix on a ceramic palette. Now, if you find that like when you're doing these petals, they're, you're wetting the petal and then you're putting in pretty watery paint. So you need to skip around and not do any adjacent petals. Otherwise the colors could spill into one another and then you lose that definition. So once I had kind of done all the petals on the left flower and realized that I was, you know, getting too close to all the other ones, I decided to go over to the right petal. It's the same exact technique. Um, you're just, uh, you know, you're just doing it on the other flower so that you can get around the petals. Now I did get a little braver with the colors on this flower. So, you know, you can use your own preference. If you prefer darker colors, go darker. If you prefer lighter and softer, go softer. Since my background was, um, was so bold I did end up liking a little bit darker color in my flower even though the reference photo had lighter flowers on a darker background you know you can do it however you want use your reference photo as reference and do your thing now I want to offer a little bit of a um of an ad adaptation if you're working in a sketchbook that's got a wood pulp paper you may notice that um your paper is not staying evenly wet as you're wetting an area and adding adding your pigment to it so in that case if you're working the sketchbook maybe it's got thinner paper and it doesn't um uh it doesn't give you that kind of a temperance that a water that a cotton watercolor paper does what you could do is like you could add the, say the violet the purple darker color you could add that in on the dry paper take a wet brush blend it out like a damp brush not like a really soppy wet brush just damp blend it out add your next color then blend that out and then add your third color and blend that out that might work a little bit better for you depending on the paper you're using the nice thing about cotton paper is that when you wet it it kind of soaks in a little bit and it evens out so it maintains this like a moisture equilibrium that cotton paper doesn't seem to. Cotton paper seems to, um, it'll absorb some and then some will puddle and some will dry quicker and some will, will dry slower. And that's why you have you have a tendency to get blooms more on a, um, on a wood pulp paper than on a cotton paper. And that's a personal preference. I mean, obviously cotton paper is going to be a little more archival, well, a lot more archival and um, resist breaking down with environmental factors. But um, 
but it is certainly a fact. There are certain effects I love on the wood pulp paper. I love my, for instance, my Arteza sketchbooks and my Stillman and Burns sketchbook because I just really enjoy that surface, which is like a, I would say like a 90 pound, uh, very quite smooth um, sketchbook paper that can take like mixed media, watercolor, that sort of thing. But when I'm doing techniques like this, it's really handy to have a, a paper that's not going to make my paint want to bloom. Even when I flicked the wet paint on the background there on a on a wood pulp paper that would those would be all like little blooms it would actually look a lot like baby's breath with little hard edges and the white flowers almost like little little white florets there um but with the cotton paper it wants to equalize a little bit more it wants to kind of help you not get blooms so just uh just want to put that out there in case you're working on a wood pulp paper and you're struggling a little bit just um maybe use a little less water maybe put the color down first and then blend it out with a wet brush there's a technique that i've shown you in videos in the past called the british two brush method so basically what you have is you've got one brush that you're adding color with and you've got another brush that's just clean and damp and you're using that second brush to blend so you paint with one you blend with the other and it just keeps you from having to rinse your brush out all the time is all it does but um, that might be very helpful another thing i want you to be aware of when you're doing this technique is to to avoid mud because you're using three primary colors here and when you're using a red yellow and blue um, if you just have two colors you're going to get a, a nice bright uh, secondary color but if you mix the three together you can get a muddy color because it kind of they cross the color wheel and you get into complements and then they they neutralize each other so keep that in mind. Uh, it's it's definitely a balancing act with the wetness of the paper. So this, even though it seems really tedious because you're painting so many little petals, and you could actually do this really big. I have a really large peony painting that I sometimes I have in the background of videos, and I'd always have people ask me how I painted it. This is how I painted it, and it took forever, but it was. It's a really great. Um, a really great lesson in balancing your colors in blending and uh, that sort of thing so give it a try at a larger scale if you want to as you get to the smaller petals you may only have one color on a petal especially if it's like a folded over area or just a little sliver of a petal so don't feel like you have to cram all those colors in if you don't see them or if you don't want them now I definitely took a lot of liberties with my reference photo here and just kind of went and did my own thing as far as coloring um, and kind of anticipating where I would find more shadows. So, you know, you can do what you want to do. You can look at the reference photo. You can look at my um, finished artwork photo and you can decide what is, uh, what, what colorway you like best. You could go with a completely different colorway and just use the, um, use uh, the techniques here as a guide and use the um, the coloring in the reference photo as a guide. It's completely up to you. A reference photo is just that. It is a reference. It is a place for you to stop, uh, start off on and um, you can always do your own thing. You can even find a reference photo that you love the composition of, like maybe you love the way this flower looks, but you like a different color scheme or you like a different background. Um, and the more that you paint, especially the more that you paint from life, like if you have like a vase of flowers that you can go by and you can change your lighting and you can look at the different variations you can get, the more that you practice, the more you're going to be able to say, okay, I like these flowers, but I want to do different lighting. And I know from experience how the lighting will go and um, you can change it up and it just comes with experience. So you're never going to hurt yourself by painting from a reference photo and painting from life and painting as much as you can because you're, you're stockpiling all sorts of uh, different lighting scenarios, different experiences, and you're really observing when you do that. And you're going to be a stronger painter for it. And then when it comes time to divert from uh, one of my lessons or from a reference photo or from something that you're looking at in real life, you're going to be able to do that. Now, I have to say, I was really pleased with how these flowers were coming together at this point. And um, I was really excited to, uh, to carry on with this painting. Now we're going to mix our colors together to make a brown and I basically used uh, red, blue and yellow. Uh, and just kind of mix them until I got a nice rich brown that I liked. Um, and now I'm tapping that into the center of the larger flower, the flower on the left, to get the stamens in there. 
and that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, you can pick up a little bit of green and dab that in. You can pick up a little bit of yellow and dab that in, depending on what you want in the center of your flower. Now I'm using a watered down mix of the olive green and a little bit of the Mayan blue, and I am painting in the stems and adding a little bit more of a bluer tone towards the top of the stems where it'd be a little bit darker and more shadowed. I wasn't sure how much I really wanted to put for detail in the foliage because I really wanted the flowers to steal the show. And uh, I did decide after I was done painting this and I'd kind of let it sit on my table and walked away and came back that the rosebuds, I didn't like how dark they were. They were dark in the reference photo. And then I'm like, well, I guess I should paint them dark because they're all tightly closed up there. But I went much darker than the one on the top and I did not like it. So I think I might actually revisit this painting in a few days and maybe do some other stuff to it. But uh, for the for the time being, this is it's stay, it's it's going to be pure watercolor for this video. Um, but I think I might actually go in and do some mixed media to it later. Um, I'm gonna let it sit for a few days though because um, I have been rash before and then regretted changing things, so it was it can sit for a bit. I decided to use some nice juicy uh, leaves there at the bottom, but I decided that I didn't want them super detailed. I wanted the flowers with all the petals to be kind of the focal point. And, um, and I think that's what I didn't like about these, what the, these rosebuds after I would sat and looked for them. They're so dark. I think that I'll probably end up taking a scrubber brush and lifting some of that paint out. So I guess I would give you the advice if you're painting long to go easy on the rosebuds and not make them any darker than the top one because, uh, well, because I regretted it. So maybe you would too. I don't know. It, it just looks so vibrant right there and I don't, um, and I don't care for it. So take it, take it for, for what you will. Uh, that was that after I'd, after I'd sat and looked at it and, or come, actually it was after I came back to it. I'm like, uh, I don't like those rose bloods. It looks like a couple strawberries just kind of sitting there in the front of the picture. It's bugging me. I can't see anything other than those right now. I should just like <laughs> zoom into just the flowers. Uh, so I'm adding some shading now. I'm adding a little bit darker. I'm at, it's a mix of the Mayan blue, a little bit of the, uh, the, the, uh, go, uh, shoot, olive green, and just adding some shadow to the rosebuds up there to give it a little bit more roundness and a little bit more body. And I'm doing the same on the, uh, the rosebuds. And I like the, I like the greenery actually. I have the foliage fine. I like that. I just don't like that. Those bright strawberries. Doesn't it look like a, but now that, now that I call them strawberries, you can't unsee it. Like it's like those pincushion strawberries that, <laughs> Oh, I don't like them. But anyway, um, now I'm going in with some bolder shadows on the flowers. And I decided to do this one on the right first because I didn't like that one as much, that flower as much, and that wasn't my focal point. So I figured I'll get my practice on this one. And then by the time I come around to the one on the left, which is the uh, the dominant flower, the kind of the focus of the painting, I'll be really good at this shading. I'm pretty much just using the, um, the rose red for my uh, glazed shadows here because I wanted to have the flowers have a little bit more of a red undertone or a pink undertone to them. I want that to be more the dominant color of the three. So what I'm basically doing it here is adding the uh, the color where I want it the strongest and then blending it out, kind of in that two brush method, except I am cleaning my brush. Now there I did add some yellow because I actually, I had this weird uh, gap of color in the background from the background painting that I did, plus where I was putting in all the colors in the background, there was like this little gap where the colors didn't meet. So I just kind of extended that back petal to that so it wouldn't be just this gap of, you know, no man's land of, you know, is it painted? Is it background? Is it a flower? What is going on? So I just kind of made a petal there. But for the most part, I'm just using the uh, the rose red on its own, adding the color and then blending it out with a damp brush. And I'm doing that on uh, mostly on just dry petals and I'm just, you know, putting in the color and blending it out. If you find that technique just doesn't work for you, you can wet the petal gently because you don't want to lift up anything you have underneath and then uh, add in your color and let it blend naturally. But I feel like this, um, doing this step here, it adds some luminosity because you can see all the colors underneath. This brush is nice and soft. It's not going to lift up anything underneath, especially on a cotton paper. It may tend to lift a little bit more on a wood pulp paper. So just use a soft brush and be careful. Um, I, you can see all those tones underneath, but I feel like it unifies it really well and it just makes it a little more defined and, um, and just makes it look a little more polished. I'm really, I was really pleased with how that flower looked and it gave me the encouragement to do the same on the larger flower. Cause I have to say, I was really enjoying those, seeing those three colors in each of those petals on the larger flower. I thought that was really pretty. And, um, I was kind of a little nervous to go over it because 
I just, I'm not very good at subtle and I thought that that subtle technique looked really nice on that. Now when you come across like a bump on a flower, like a little curl or a, or a ridge, try to leave that a little bit lighter so that you get that dimension. Um, basically this stage is uh, accentuating everything that you've already done up to this point. So you're not repainting anything. You are, um, you're accentuating. It's like, you know, putting decorations on a cupcake. You've already frosted it. You've already baked it. You know, it's good as it is. You're just doing a little something to ex accentuate it a little bit, make it a little bit sweeter, a little bit prettier. Um, and that's what I'm doing here. And then like, you know, your highlights and stuff would be the sprinkles on the cupcake, which I really, um, I really kind of like debated because I was kind of like, geez, I, I was really happy with the way the petals were looking, um, other than those darn buds down at the bottom. I think if I didn't have painted those, I would have been really pleased with the flower, with the painting overall. But I was also thinking, geez, do I want to highlight? You know, I could use that white, um, the white paint in the Turner kit, or I could use colored pencil. I decided not to do any of that. Um, and I'm really not 100% sure what I'm going to do. I think I might just scrub out some of the color in the buds, but there's a part of me that really just wants to grab those Prismacolor pencils and, you know, put the, those sprinkles on the cupcake, but I haven't decided yet. So, um, so I'm leaving it as a straight watercolor. I know a lot of you watercolor purists out there will really appreciate that. Uh, I'm really loving how the petals are coming out here, I have to say. it's I really love this technique and I really like the way it looked. I wish I had done something different with those buds. Those buds, the scrubber brush is coming out. If nothing else, I am doing something to those buds. Even if it's cutting the painting, cutting them out of the painting, I don't know. But, um, <clears throat> but I'm really loving the petals. Uh, I like it when I can see these different colors. Um, I love to see soft blends together. I like the kind of feminine um, uh, softness and shape of the petals. There's just something that I find very appealing to that technique, and I haven't done it very much lately, and it's uh, it's nice. It definitely would be fun to do in a, at a really large scale. So, hey, if you're stuck home and uh, you want a challenge, get out that 22 by 30 inch sheet of watercolor paper you've been hoarding and, and draw this big, and I think that would be really, really fun, really fun to do. So here I'm sure I, I've zoomed in and I'm sure I'm going to go off frame at one point or another. Uh, so I, I'm just going to apologize in advance for that. But I just wanted to zoom in so I could show you the kind of shading technique I was doing here. This almost reminds me of uh, of like a greeting card illustration, you know, like Mother's Day cards and stuff. That would make a really nice Mother's Day card, by the way. Um, it'll be here before you know it. Actually, the British already had their Mother's Day, but uh, American Mother's Day is not till May. Um, and I'm just doing very, very loose shading um, or a detailing on the leaves I because I, I want the leaves loose but I did feel like I needed a little bit of um, a little bit of shading because it was just too loose compared to the the flowers do you do you kind of get my drift I wanted it kind of in between there I did the same thing to that flower on the bottom the petal on the bottom oh my gosh the leaf on the bottom I did the same one as the one right above the rosebud just adding a little bit of that darker color you can see it there I had stuck my hand in that one when it was wet so that's why I had to go in and do something to that one quite honestly I probably could have left it be and for like the to show that the curve on those petals uh, the sepals around the buds I just kind of did some line work some little kind of liney shapes because I needed to uh, I needed to show that movement and I put a few thorns on the stems just because I felt like they were too smooth to be rose petals uh, rose stems and that pretty much does it I hope you enjoyed this if you want to see the real-time version of this check out critique club it's five dollars a month and it allows you to put up two of your paintings per month for an individualized critique from me and there's also two long lessons per month that are a little bit more advanced and could be in the mixed media vein so it's kind of fun just to explore and increase your skills thanks for watching and until next time happy crafting